Hello everyone, welcome to the new video of the Classical Games series. Today we will be looking at the game between uh, Mikhail Chigorin and Wilhelm Steinitz. It was played in the 1890 and in 1891, since the moves have been sent by telegraph. It was a team match, uh, basically both of these players, they have published some analyses at the time and about two openings and then um, each one of them claimed that one side is better, like Trigorin was supporting the white side in the Evans Gambit and the Steinitz was supporting the black side in a certain variation. So they organized this match to check uh, who is more right? So let's see. Uh, as I said, it was Evans Gambit, so I will, I will just go quickly through the first couple of moves. So this is the so-called Evan Evans Gambit. And now Black can go to several spots, but he chooses um, Bishop A5, and uh, now White Castles. His idea is to play D2, D4, take over the center, and... Uh, and get some lead in development plus central control. And the variation in question is this one with queen f6, where black is trying to hold on to this uh, pawn. He's going to protect it with the queen. Okay, white took the center, and now knight h6. So, uh, this is the move that Steinitz supported and uh, he was analyzing this thoroughly and he thought that this is good enough for black but uh, Chigorin was the one that liked the white's position now you see you can develop your bishop with the tempo and this queen has to move somewhere it basically has only two spots and uh, this was the chosen one he could also go here and maybe decide to uh, give up the pawn. Let's say white pushes the knight, and then after you uh, decide what to do with this bishop, you can take this pawn. So you can either take on d8, on h6. Probably it's better to take on uh, d8 and uh, um, deny the black king a right to castle. But here it looks like white is certainly better. Uh, black uh, is not advised to take this guy because after rook e1, uh, you can already see that this king is in a very dangerous situation. But okay, uh, queen d6 was played, and now d5. So now this knight has to go somewhere. He doesn't want to go back from where he began the game. It would be maybe a good idea to put him on e7, but black chose to go to d8 and um, this doesn't look like a good spot because as you can see this pawn is taking these spots also there are black pawns on f7 and b7 and this knight doesn't have much of a future but okay maybe black was hoping to do something with it later and now queen a4 this is a good move it attacks this guy and once that guy goes back now this b pawn is blocked and both the bishop and the knight are having hard time to develop knight a3 what is the idea of knight a3 well uh, white wants to remove the bishop from c4 and then place the knight on c4 and attack the queen and maybe this bishop and this pawn so what did uh, black do he played c6 and the idea of this move is after he retreats the bishop to maybe have a chance to go b5 but let's see white is not gonna just sit there he went with his plan releasing the c4 square for his knight and black went with his plan so he's ready to play b5 but there is a problem white is a little bit faster so he goes knight c4 and attacks the queen. Uh, queen went back to f8, but what would happen 
if for example uh, queen went to c5 then white could play this move d6 and if black carries on with b5 idea then simple taking on c7 and attacking the knight will win the game because uh, black can never take on a4 because white takes on d8 with checkmate after d6 oops after d6, if um, black decides to take that pawn, then after bishop e3, this queen is a little bit of trouble because she is attacked and uh, the only place she can go is b5, obviously, but then the bishop will be lost. So black will probably have to do something like this. But even then, you just take the queen, and when the black recaptures, we win the bishop. So that's not good. Therefore, instead of uh, queen c5, um, black played in this position a queen f8. But now Chigorin had something very interesting prepared. And that is the move d6. A great move and very far sighted. So we will see later. Uh, actually, we will see very soon. But the point is to distract this bishop from defending the b6 square. But the overall um, strategy that White applied is very, very far sighted. So let's see. Um, Black had to take this guy. And now knight b6. So because of the relation between this queen and the rook, sorry, um, this guy cannot be taken. If you take on b6, then simply uh, you lose a rook. So black retreated his rook, rook b8, and now queen can take this pawn. And as you can see, this rook here is trapped. It's not lost yet, but it doesn't have any squares. And the only thing that protects it is this bishop on d6. So this bishop can never leave this diagonal. But he doesn't have too many squares on that diagonal. He cannot go to e5, and if he ever goes to c7, we can always go knight a8, attacking it, and then this rook will be in trouble. So here, black has two pawns. Um, extra, uh, actually one pawn extra. He has he's up one one pawn, but he's so tied up. All his pieces are almost all of his pieces are on the back row. His king is stuck in the center. His knight is on the rim, and uh, his bishop is tied up for defend to defend this rook. And that means that the queen cannot join the action. Now all white need, white needs to do is do something with this guy, and once he does that. Uh, black will be in big trouble. So uh, black developed the knight, used the situation that there is no more d4, d5 pawn. And now, great move bishop c1. You don't want to let this knight exchange itself for this bishop because you need this bishop to uh, harass this guy. As you will see, after knight g8, um, white plays bishop a3. And... Uh, if you take this bishop, you obviously lose a rook. So, instead of that, uh, black decided to, to block uh, this diagonal. So he played c5. And with that move, he freed the c6 square. So he is actually threatening to bring this knight through e7 to c6 and save himself. But uh, it's white's move, so white played rook a d1. And now he's attacking this bishop, so knight e7 is no more possible. Like if you would play knight e7, uh, he can just uh, take your bishop, and if you go here, attacking the rook and attacking the queen, well, White can deal with that in one move, and whichever way you recapture, you'll just take your rook and 
it's a lost position. So black decided to go to f6 and at least control this d5 square. But now bishop came to c4 and uh, from this square, oops, sorry, where was I? Bishop c4. So bishop came to c4 to give some extra control over d5 square and also at the right moment this bishop can take on e6 and uh, help in some tactical variations. We will see that in the future. So uh, black retreated and uh, just one more thing. If since this knight is now attacking this pawn, if black would decide to go that way, that would not be good because white could force things by taking on c8, rook takes c8, queen b7, and now the rook is hanging and the knight is hanging. So the rook would have to um, block the attack to the knight, but now white has this move and uh, attacking the rook. And if you take the knight, then you open up this rook for the queen to give the checkmate. So that's really not good. That's why here uh, black didn't take the e4 pawn, but he went here with the bishop. But now white just played uh, knight d5, attacking the bishop. The bishop went back, and now white played knight h4 with the idea of going to f5 and again attacking this bishop. The whole theme of the game is this bishop on d6, and after we reach this trapped rook position. So once white destroys it, he will just win a rook. So black took on d5, and now white even didn't bother to recapture, but just entered with his knight. Because if you ever move this guy, then this one is for free. So that's why this is not even a peace sacrifice, it's just a complete domination. So black played g6 and attacked the knight, uh, white exchanged and now took with the bishop. And now white has a threat. The threat is to take with this bishop on e6 and at the same time open the rook's attack on the queen. So the queen would have to recapture and then you win the rook. So let's say black plays something totally indifferent, let's say a castle. Then we can go like this. And as you can see, the rook is attacking the queen and also the bishop has taken the knight. So black would have to deal with uh, recapturing the piece and, re and saving the queen. So he has to take with the queen. But then he deflects the queen from defending the rook. So white would just take the rook. So that's why here uh, black decided to move his queen away from the d file. But now white has a forced win. Of material. He just exchanges. As you remember before I said that this bishop might be useful to exchange itself sometimes on e6 just to help in the tactical operation. So this was taken and now bishop c5. And if you look at this position this rook still doesn't have where to go and on the next move white is threatening to put the bishop on d6 and just win the guy. So black decided to somehow save a little bit of material, actually to get at least a bishop for this rook, so he played rook a8. A good move, but it's not enough. Uh, so the point is to deflect the queen from defense of this bishop. But in the process you give the rook for a bishop, so it's not the best. Uh, it's not uh, getting you anywhere, but it's prolonging the game. It's, instead of resigning, you can still fight a little bit more. Now, this is a good move. From here, queen will later help the white rook to invade the black's position through b-file. We will see how that works. Now, black played king d8. Of course, uh, he cannot take on c3 because after rook c1, as you can see, this one is in trouble after the queen moves. So, king d8. And now rook d2, and black played king c7. If again queen c3, then again trouble on the c file, 
this time like this, rook c2, queen d4, and now white can just do something like this, and he's totally winning here. So basically, the c3 pawn should never be touched here. And now, white played rook b1, with the idea of going with the rook to b5, and uh, just entering the black's position. So black went here. Uh, queen c3 was not working now for more simple reasons. You just go rook c2 and pin the queen against the king. Like even here, if you if you go the, here, you just rook c2, and as you can see, now there is a pin and the queen is lost. So the queen retreated, retreated to c6, and now queen b4. Uh, taking the, diff, the c5 square under control, and there is a threat just to put the rook uh, here and win the queen. So black had to cover the c5 square and he played d6. But now white continued to press and uh, black went back. Just to show you some variations, so this move is made to stop b6 because if now b6, then we can go a5. And this is all forced with this check. Watch this rook b6, queen somewhere, and we take on d6 twice and just win the rook. Also, here, if uh, black tries to develop his bishop on d7, uh, there is also a pretty combination like this. It's not even a combination, it just wins the, the queen. You see, you just win the queen. or if the king goes up, is even worse. You can play like this and win. Actually, this is checkmate in two. So that's why after a4, the queen went back to e8. And now rook b6 attacking this guy. And queen f8 defending. And now queen a5 uh, put, put threatening discovered check. So black played d5. Now this discover check would be stupid because black can just take it. So after e d5, uh, black uh, white took on d5 and uh, black ran away with the king. He, he didn't have much choice. If he takes here, we just take and give the open check and win the queen. So after King b8, the pawn was played to d6, and now black's position is totally busted. He's down an exchange, a clear exchange, plus a pawn, and he, he doesn't have any play, so he resigned. Uh, and that's it. I, I think this game is really nice and instructive, and also... It's funny that on move 14, white started a combination with d5, d6, and on move 38, he actually played the closing move of the game, also d5 to d6, because another pawn appeared on d5, so this is very rare to start some combination with one move with the pawn, and then 20-something move later, later. 20, actually, uh, 20, 24, 24 moves later, you, you finish the game with the same move. So it's a quite a curiosity. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and goodbye.